Hey and welcome back to another Revit video. And in this Revit video, we're going to look at trimming our new topography out of our existing topography. And you can look at this any way because it is basically taking and trimming topography, new versus existing. That's really it. And so this is not as simple as you might think, even though it seems like, oh, we can just cut one out of the other. Well, I wish it were that simple. So before we get into it, if you happen to learn something in this video, please, please, please demolish that like button. It tells me that you might have learned something or that you just liked the video. Okay, getting into it now. What we've done in a previous video is we've made and completely accurately located these topographies, both existing and new, based on at one of these arbitrary levels and like coordinates that we wanted to decide on, like literally located at X and Y and then vertically in the z-axis so we have it located but then what we have now is we actually have our existing topography which is this larger portion then we have this new topography which is kind of the center portion and you can see that they're they're overlapping and so what we need to do is uh, actually cut out the edge of this existing topography so that we it, it meets the new topography we don't have overlapping existing and new topography together because that doesn't make any sense so what are we going to do how are we going to do that well Ultimately, what's going to happen is we're going to actually trim the existing topography around the new topography. That seems simple enough, right? Well, it seems simple enough because if we come into Massing Insight and we go to Split Surface, then what would we do? Well, I just I want to split this existing, and now we just need to draw lines. Well, the problem is we can't select these lines. Like it, it would be, it should be simple because I should be well maybe not should but like i wish i could select the boundaries of the topography something i've noticed is that if we come into the visible the visibility graphics and we go to topography there's a lot of things here obviously we've got our primary secondary whatever whatever but if i just like actually the topography itself i've got my boundary points whatever but the topography itself if we override the lines there's only a few lines here and we want this to be solid or we don't really actually need to override it because they are already solid. Um, but the weight, maybe we want to put it 10 so we like definitely see it. Well, if I hit OK, you can you can immediately see what we want to see. Well, this is this happens to be, well, it includes more than this, but it definitely includes the boundary. Like I have my boundary. Now still, this is just visibility graphics, remember, so I can't actually select this and like pick these lines. There's no picking. I can't do anything. So essentially what that did is kind of pointless. I just noticed that and it's kind of helpful. If you wanted to highlight the edge of your topography, that's how you do it. So with this, what do we do? We basically need to find a way to make these lines and we need to like actually make them and deal with it. Well, the only thing that I can think of is to use the CAD file that it comes with or that we made this from. If we hide our topographies, what are we left with? Well, we're left with our existing versus new up here, but I, you know, I don't want to see my existing because I don't care. I'm trying to cut the existing topography that I've made already out of the new topography that I have also made already. So let's go ahead and query these layers. And I'm going to select this, you know, existing layers. I'm going to hide that. And then I'm going to uh, also hide the rest of it. And so what we're left with is just these new layers. This, I mean, seems nice. Okay. So what are we going to do now? Well, there's a couple things I can do. Well, I can, I can literally just draw lines. I, of course, I still can't pick. I can't pick boundary edges because they don't exist, but I can pick these lines that are actually the lines that make up my topography, but that won't do me any good. I'm trying to pick the edge of this. Well, what I can do is actually draw lines that go from the endpoints here. And, you know, this can only be as accurate as you would like it to be. Like, obviously, I want to snap and, like, tab to these endpoints so it is actually accurate. Um, but I won't bore you with this, but this is one way to do it. Uh, quite painful, I will say, uh, because you have to go around the whole site, and uh, this is not something I purely enjoy doing because there's a lot of other things that I'd rather be doing than picking the boundary of my topography that already has a boundary, even though it's something I can't select by default. So anyways, you can see what I'm doing here, and this is quite a pain. Uh, my problem here also now is that I, I get to the edge and like where where's the edge of the edge of the topography? Well, in theory, it's I don't know, it's there and then it's there, but I don't know. So anyways, you can infer this. You can go all the way around and infer this and you can actually go back into if we reveal them uh, with RH. We can reveal these 
And so I want to split this existing. And so now I can actually pick this edge. I can pick that entire edge. So cool. I, I, whatever, I'm a quarter of the way done. Uh, but like I said before, maybe this isn't exactly where my topography edge is. Obviously it seems pretty close, um, but in, it, and it looks like I am actually right on it. But another way, I want to show you another way to do this. So I'm actually going to have, uh, hide the CAD file, not CAD the hide file. So let's go ahead and hide the CAD file. Hide this one. And we actually want to hide the existing two. So we're working with, you can see I'm off, like I'm already off. And this is just based on the way that my uh, Revit is triangulating these points. So here's the edge of like this point here is the edge of the like CAD file. But because I have a point that extends beyond that over here, it has to triangulate it. So it's adding this extra portion of topography. Now, maybe this maybe this line that I'm drawing would be more accurate. But I, what I want to show you, I'm, I'm going to hide this. What I want to show you is how to get the actual edge of your topography like this topography that we made, that Revit made for us based on the cab. In theory, I trust this more, but, you know, I could definitely make the argument for using the CAD file because that is literally the extent. So this is giving us slightly more extents, and so maybe it is worth going and doing what I was doing with line by line because uh, what we're about to do is a bit more tedious, but is actually correct based on the edge of this topography. So I'm going to edit the surface, and what we get is obviously all the points, and I don't want to move anything. I don't want to change anything. But one thing that I have access to, and I actually need to go to a floor plan view to be able to see this. So in my floor plan view now, I can edit the surface. And there's something that I can do in, obviously, this floor plan view that I can't do in 3D. So if we look up here, and if you look at all these tools, and you see what I can't use up here versus what I can use in the floor plan, I can see, ooh, I can draw a reference plane. Now, I'm not normally a fan of reference planes because most of the time it's unnecessary. And not that I... I'm discounting what they're used for and how useful they can be, but a lot of times people just place them all over the place willy-nilly, and there's a million in your project, and you're, you think they're useful, but they're not. They're just in the way, whatever. Ugh. So we're actually going to draw a reference plane. And I like to name things, so it's kind of nice. So I'm going to make sure this subcategory is uh, not none, but I want to create a new one. And I'm actually going to type topography. I want this to be all caps. I want I want to see this. I want people to know what it is. And typically, I this is the type of thing where I'm probably just going to, you know, get rid of this when I'm done. And I'm gonna, for the sake of this, I'm gonna make it this this awful color. Um, and let's give it a bit of line weight five. Okay, great. So we have this here. And what I want to do is, I can then select these points. Like the, you can see, I can choose any one of these points to make a reference line between, which is really cool. Unfortunately, if I come to my pick line, I can't actually pick lines. You know, that's kind of, I don't have any lines here. These aren't technically lines, they're all points. So what I can do is take my regular line, and I remember I'm drawing reference lines. I can pick lines that are literally between these two points. And you could see exactly what I'm going to do. Like this is, again, very tedious work, but I'm actually going to be able to get these that are going to be perfectly aligned to all of these points that create the boundary of my actual topography. Again, you can use this method, and once I'm done with this, I'll show you exactly what we're going to have to do to actually split the existing topography. But you can do this, or you can do what we did before and use the CAD file and get pretty close to what we had before as far as actually showing and getting the boundary from our true topography from the CAD file instead. It's kind of up to you. And you see I missed it there. And so we have to make sure we're getting the endpoints like every time because if this is, doesn't join well and, or, you know, obviously this is something that will work regardless of, as long as this is a closed loop of lines is what I mean. This will work when it comes to splitting, but I want this to be as accurate as possible. Like I want this to actually be the boundary of my topography or else like what am I spending all this time doing that's kind of the point here I want to make sure this is accurate so you can see cool so I, at this point I'm going to go all the way around my topography and when I'm done I will come back and I'll show you what we do from there because it, it is very simple once we have all of these lines around the boundary you can see how this is going to work and that it will work pretty well so I will see you when I'm done in just a second so I've gotten to this point here where I clearly know I have a point here and I can't see it. 
So why is that? Why do you think that is? Well, I guarantee you it has to be with where my view range is because you can see that the lines get darker here. I'm actually cutting here along this line. I don't want to do that. I want to be well above all the topography. So if you can't see it, make sure you're in uh, the correct view, like a site plan view, to where you know you have unlimited area kind of above and below, mainly below to where you can see everything you need to see to make these reference lines. So I'm about halfway done. So I'll see you when I am actually done. So I finally have this done. And you can see that this, this pink line all the way around is my reference line, my topography reference lines. Now I can actually hide my site for now and I'm, I'll hide it to show you something. And with this hidden, we can see this a bit better. You know, obviously there, there's my lines. Um, these are working great. Uh, but this is the line that I created previously with like actual model lines. And you can see some of the deviations in there just based on where the edge of the CAD file is and then the edge of my topography. So I'm going to leave this up to you. In theory, the edge of the CAD file is where you want to do it. But if you want the true edge of the topography, we do it this way. So for the sake of this, I'll hide that. And so all we need to do is actually manipulate this point to the point where we actually get these as like a solid line. So I can come in here and I can simply draw like actual lines that I want to draw. So I'm going to go and draw lines and maybe we'll make these uh, just the basic wide lines. And I'll just, I'll select all of these lines, you know, just like I did before. Like I can select all these pretty easily now. They're all separate lines. They're very easy to work with. And once I select all of these, we can then go in and make sure they're all joined properly so I can simply easily select them. And so like I know I have smaller lines here, but getting over here, I have a few. And maybe there's another small one there. Maybe it's right here, there. Cool. So, okay. So now I will actually go into my visibility graphics. I'm going to hide in annotations. I want to hide my reference lines. Okay. And so now I'm just left with like the lines that I know that I need. And so we can clearly see there's a couple of discrepancies, like I missed one there. So I can come in and of course continue drawing wide lines and pick that line there. And we can test the exact same way by pressing tab and I can see these, the darker endpoints as opposed to the just outline tells me that I have to deal with some edges. So like I'm not exactly on the endpoint there, unfortunately. There we go. And then finally here I have a little bit of a gap and I can fix this with that. So this ought to tell me that uh, of course an endpoint is not exactly right. So there's some tediousness to this work. And so what I have now is one solid line. Cool. I'm actually going to cut that because I don't need it. And now I'm going to go back to 3D. And so we want to make sure that we see both our existing and our new just so we can see both of them. And what we want to do is again go to massing and then split and we're going to choose to split the existing. And what I'm going to do now is then just simply paste from clipboard. And so you'll see that I don't know where this is supposed to go. And so I'll just paste it. But I don't want to do this. I want to do this in a plan view. So the plan that I copied it from was the site. And so I can literally come in here. And yeah, I could pick these lines again, but I've already done that. So I'll just go again to paste. And again, I don't know exactly where to put it. I want to put it at zero, zero, um, make this be close to zero. But the easiest way around that is while this is trying to pick a number basically it's trying to have you select a number I actually don't want to choose a number I want it to be zero so I can literally put zero hit okay and I get my lines exactly where I want them which is fantastic this works for really any kind of sketch or pasting and plan views really nice really helpful so if I come into 3d I can see boom I have located these lines along the edge of my existing topography well existing and new topography quite well so I can hit okay there we go and so what I have left here is three, one, two, and three. Um, I just want to get rid of the existing. See my existing here in the middle? I've got all that overlap. I can just delete that. Technically, you shouldn't delete that. Let's go ahead and demolish that because we're we're trying to like actually be accurate here. So existing versus new, boom, it's de demolished. And we want to make sure, of course, in our phase filters that we show previous plus new. So that demo is now gone. And so we are left with essentially this perfectly cut out new topography for my existing topography, which is really nice because all of these grades line up 
essentially like pretty, pretty well along the edge of my existing topography and my new. So that's kind of, I mean, that's the way uh, regrading sites work. You need, like you can only edit, you can only edit, you can only alter the site up to your boundary line or up to your property line. So that's where typically you'd want to do this. But in this case, I want to do the whole topography that the civil engineer has modified. And so this is going to, obviously I've got some nasty topography to deal with that I talked about in the previous video, but I've gotten that nice edge of my site with all the new versus existing. And obviously it works great. And of course, just like that, I can, the nice thing about this too is that if I make a section, obviously if we make a giant section, we can see this, but we're going to see both existing and new topography. Like this is going to work together. And then what we can see here is I've got both my topographies. There's both of them right there. Very cool stuff. And so you can clearly see the line between new and existing topography. Really nice stuff. So that is going to do it for this video. We basically split this existing topography where the edge of our new topography was. And so we have a nice seam between our new and existing topography. Really nice. It's probably something you'd need for most projects, assuming you have existing topography that extends beyond your site. A lot of times you don't, but if you do, this is definitely something you're going to have to do. So if you happen to learn something, which I hope you did, that's why you're here, I think, I hope, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot and tells me that you might have liked the video or that you learned something. That I mean, that helps a lot. I'd like to know that. So... That will do it for this video. Have a wonderful day. I will see you in the next one.